GM, my name is Frank and welcome to the evolution of a Solidity developer. So one of your friends gets you excited about the blockchain world because one of three reasons, memes, money, or mission. You see a whole bunch of the jokes online and you go, ha, that seems like a really silly industry. Well, guess what? You're right. Or you see a lot of these images of people posting how much money they're making online, or you're into the mission, you love privacy, you hate the current monetary system, you don't like the government, or you live in a bomb shelter and you just hate everybody, and that's why you get into it. Any one of those three reasons is great. So you go online and you figure out, hmm, how do I get started with this Solidity thing? And you'll find this tool called Remix. One of these pasty-faced, lanky-ass dudes who's got nothing better to do than to make videos out of their bedroom We'll introduce you to this tool or maybe ZK Atlas or something like that, and you will love it. And you'll start to learn solidity. You'll be like, wow, transactions, blockchain, this is so amazing. You'll be a little bit confused because every time you look up the Remix framework, you'll run into this Node.js garbage, but that's just because there's a JavaScript framework for everything. Kamala Harris said she was running for president, Kamala JS the next day. In fact, if you try to run Biden run in your CLI, you'll get a quick ASCII photo of Kamala going, not this year, Joe, not this year. After spending some time with Remix and maybe putzing around crypto zombies, you'll feel pretty good about yourself until you look at the MakerDAO code base and realize you have no idea what the hell you're doing. To which you will then move to the Chad Foundry or Hard Hat developer. Now, this is actually where most people stay in the entirety of their career. And this is a great place to make money and to live and to really not move from here. That's why it's circled and you can see if you're astute, a lot of these arrows actually point back to this Chad developer right here. Let me adjust this because the glare is in there. See, he's holding a little hammer and wearing a hard hat. Anyways. Now, if you came from the JavaScript world, you will actually start with hard hat because it'll be something familiar. Developer experience equals familiarity, right? But then one day as you're scrolling through your Twitter feed, because that's where you live now, or Warpcast, which you only cast about how much you love Warpcast. But if you're scrolling through your Twitter feed, maybe you'll run into a paradigm -y and you'll be introduced to Georgios and then that's all you can see. And all you can see is all these people writing RM, RM, RM in their Twitter feeds. So you decide to give Foundry a try to which you will never be able to go back. Switching to Foundry is like switching from toilet paper to a bidet. You will be disgusted by anybody who uses anything else other than your precious bidet. And whenever you walk into a code base, you will immediately go, I need to speak to your manager and demand a founder.tom I'll be put in the code base immediately. Just the thought of smearing JavaScript all over your clean EVM code base makes you sick. And you spit on anyone who uses hard hat or brownie or ape or any other framework. Now at this point, if you came into the Remix world because of memes, that was the one of three that you chose, and you've made it over to here, you'll have to switch that to either mission or money because you'll need a reason to justify to your partner why you're spending all this time saying GM sir to 15 year olds on the internet. Now, like I said, most people live here and this is where they stay and they do well here. And if you're like most people, great. There's no reason to move beyond this. You just want to keep getting better, keep learning how to deploy more code and deploy defensible code. But that won't happen. You'll start thinking you're pretty damn good at what you do and you want to be better than everyone else because everyone else sucks and you're in blockchain to win. There is no second best. So you say, I'm going to become an EVM Chad. I'm going to have hyper performance code and you move over to the optimizer. And this is where your life gets flipped upside down. You spend every waking moment glued and slunk down into your seat. Your posture starts to go to shit and you develop a hunchback and you dream in op codes. You'll start small by coding in assembly and then eventually you'll fall down the rabbit hole of huff and pure op codes and pure assembly and you'll learn what every single op code does and how much gas it costs and three gas versus two gas versus 800 gas and you'll hate people who stick stuff in storage. You'll find yourself saying gas bad and horse good and milady. And in fact, you'll even flush the toilet before you finish peeing because you want that buffer flush because you want to save that half a second in performance of your urination pattern. And it's at this point in your career where you will actually start telling the Solidity compiler at your desk, like at your computer, how stupid it is and how much smarter you are than the compiler. You will literally say, I'll show you stack too deep as you sit there and wait an extra 20 minutes because you compile everything via IR now because it's going to be more performant or whatever. You'll spend three weeks 
to optimize a function to which you'll end up saving exactly one gas. Congratulations. People like JT Riley and Pascal will become your heroes, and maybe you'll even drop into the ETH Magicians forum to start giving EIP advice about how Push Zero was the most phenomenal change to the EVM that's ever occurred, and stuff like that. Now, unlike the Hard Hat Foundry Chad, this won't really make you any money, but it'll be fun, and you can hype up your super tiny niche group of buddies who are all gas optimizers with you, until you realize, for the most part, it's a giant waste of your time. And after this point, you have a couple different options. You can either go the route of esoteric alternates, security, or ascend to EVM maximalist. Let's talk about all of them in the order at which you'll do it. You'll probably start with security. You'll know exactly how much every opco costs, how performant everything is. You say, hey, I'll be able to crush this security thing. So you'll jump on one of the thousand competitive audit platforms and try your hand only to have your submission that you spent two weeks on get invalidated by some 12 year old who says it was out of scope. And then you'll feel real stupid about yourself and realize how much you still suck. A lot of people after that get humble smashed back up to here, but some persevere. Now, as you make your slog through these competitive audits, maybe trying some bug bounties from time to time, you'll get better and better fueled by different people on Twitter posting about how they made $100,000 this month by doing 1,500 audits. Maybe you'll start posting about how dumb Certic is because they are the publicly acceptable litter box for the security community. You'll take the solvented website and literally inject it into your veins so at the drop of a hat, you can pull up some historical competition, whether it was valid or invalid, and use that as fuel to say, hey, my submission is good on one of these competitive audit platforms because it was accepted in a previous competitive audit to which you'll still get invalidated, of course. At some point, you'll probably say, hmm, I want to try some bug bounties to which you will explore the depths of a code base. You will go deeper, harder, longer, maybe a month long on a code base just to make them more secure and help them out. You will be so happy when you finally find one. You will submit it. You will tell the team. You will be hyped. You'll beat your chest. You won't be able to sleep because you're so excited, waiting for them to respond. Thank you so much for finding this bug. We're going to be so much more secure. Here is your $100,000 payout, only for them to say, oh, we upgraded our code base, so it's not in there anymore. Invalidated. And then they'll get kicked off the bug bounty platform. But even here, you still think formal verification is a joke and for the nerds. You start seeing everything as a security vulnerability. Anytime your partner says, hey, maybe we should go to the store. And you said, uh-uh, you said maybe we should go to the beach. That's a high, that's a crit. You're going down. To which, again, you will be invalidated because your partner will threaten to leave. And you've realized that you haven't spoken to anybody else outside your apartment for the last six months. So take your invalidated. The summary of this section is that 80% of the things you find will be invalidated. But at some point, you maybe you decide, hey, I'm going to move off of security because I've gathered all these different skills and I'm a little bored. So you start jumping into the esoteric languages or blockchain. You try Solana, Move, Viper, or maybe even just Rust because Rust is cool now and like all over the place and like everyone wants to code Rust. And you dabble for a while, but most people end up leaving because as of today, there's still no money over there. But maybe you'll be the one to have money appear over here. And on the other side, maybe say, you know what, screw it. I'm going to become an EVM maximalist. I've gathered all this knowledge about solidity, and I know the EVM through and through. And EVM is the best because I know it the best. You can see I didn't draw pupils on this guy because you're kind of blind if that's what you think. If you ignore everything else and you only focus on what you know, you'll never know if there's something better out there. But you're an EVM maximalist. There's nothing better else out there. In the wise words of Michael Saylor, there is no second best. He said that about Ethereum, right? No, it, it, was, it was Bitcoin. Duh. Welcome to the Solidity Clown Show. This is your life, and I'm looking forward to seeing you on the other side. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. New videos every time I get around to making one.